Good afternoon and welcome to St. Gregory the Great Parish. We are pleased to share this celebration with you. Thank you very much for coming. The holy sacrifice of the Mass will be offered by Father Almer, assisted by Deacon Paul. I have a few announcements. Live Dean is this Sunday at 5.30 p.m. All high school students are welcome. This Thursday is Edge at 6.30 p.m. and all middle schoolers are welcome. Are you considering becoming Catholic or know someone that is? This Wednesday, the 21st, the Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, or the RCIE program, will have an open meeting in the School Science Lab at 7 p.m. Unbaptized persons, baptized non-Catholic Christians, and Catholic adults who wish to receive the Sacrament of Confirmation are welcome to attend, ask questions, and find out more. The St. Greg's 8th grade mum sale is back. Pre-sale online only by this Wednesday, the 21st. Please check the bulletin for details. There will be a kickoff event uh, for 40 Days for Life on Thursday, September 22nd, from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the gathering room. Doors open at 5 p.m. for registration. Sunday, October 2nd, the annual Life Chain event will return to St. Greg's, a peaceful demonstration to support all the dignity of all life. At this time, please stand and welcome the people around you. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I'd like to welcome those who are joining us today, especially those who are visiting us for today's Eucharistic Conference. My name is Father Dan Almer, and I'm the parochial vicar here at St. Gregory the Great, and we thank you for joining us here today. 
And my brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate the 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners to serve God and not the mammon in our world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth be to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. founded on all the commands of your sacred law, upon love of you and of our neighbor. Grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this, you who trample upon the needy and destroy the poor of the land. When will the new moon be over, you ask, that we may sell our grain, and the Sabbath, that we may display the wheat? We will diminish the ephah, add to the shekel, and fix our scales for cheating. We will buy the lowly for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals. Even the refuse of the wheat we will sell. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, never will I forget a thing they have done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
he lifts up the lowly. From the ash heap, he raises the poor to set them in the company of princes. Yes, with the princes of his A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving be offered for everyone, for kings, and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this, I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth, I'm not lying. Teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish, then, that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger and argument. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, a rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, what is this that I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, what shall I do now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me? I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, how much do you owe my master? He replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to him, here is your promissory note. 
sit down and quickly write one for 50. Then to another the steward said, and how much do you owe? He replied, 100 cores of wheat. The steward said to him, here is your promissory note, write one for 80. And the master commended that dishonored steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones, and the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. The Gospel of the Lord. Soon there's going to be this new movie coming out about Padre Pio, and the main actor is Shia LaBeouf, and he's playing the role of Padre Pio. So Bishop Robert Barron actually sat down and did his interview with Shia LaBeouf. And of course, Shia became famous in his role in Even Stevens um, back in the, I believe it was in the 90s. And after that, he sort of, he had a rough path, so he had problems with alcoholism and, um, and just anger, and he went through a period of actually imprisonment, but also um, he went through rehab. And so this movie, to become, to be play Padre Pio, was this big break for him because he wanted to enter back onto the scene to get back into acting. And it's interesting in the interview because he goes through and he's talking with Bishop Barron about the process. And he started going to a seminary and he would meet with the priest every day and he would go to mass with them and he would, and he would slowly cultivate what it means to be Padre Pio. And of course, he had to learn how to say the Mass as well for the movie. And as he, the people got to know him, they kept coming up to him and saying, don't mess this up. This is important. Don't mess this up. And Shia quickly had this transformation of heart where he realized, I'm not just doing this thing. I'm not just you know, play acting something. But what I'm actually doing really matters. And this impacted his heart so much that he actually converted and decided to become Catholic. What the transformation that Shia went through, this conversion of heart, this realizing that how, how important it is that we're dealing with, is really what today's gospel passage is all about. So we have, it's interesting because we see Jesus both commend and rebuke the dishonest steward. So we have the steward who squanders his master's wealth. Now the steward would have been a slave, but he would have been ahead of the slaves. And he would have lived very comfortably, almost like the, the rich would have in that time, with, but he was a slave, he was not a free person. So when the master sent him out, he had nothing. So what he does is he goes and he, um, he decides to take these um, bills that people owe to his master and say he reduces them um, by great measure so that they'll be, he'll be welcomed into their household. And what he's doing is he's making a plan for his success. And what Jesus says is, we need to be, when it comes to the riches, the true riches, meaning the riches of eternal life, eternal salvation, we need to do everything we can to attain that. So just like the dishonest steward who went and, you know, he did these rash measures in order to try to ensure his livelihood, so too we need to do rash measures in order to ensure our livelihood in the world to come. But then Jesus goes on and he says, you know, children of the world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. In other words, we're good at getting people to do what we want or accumulating wealth or getting things to happen our way. 
but how are we when it comes to dealing with things of eternal life? And this is where this dishonest steward was dishonest in small matters, meeting his master's wealth, but how he would also be dishonest with great matters, meeting the matters of eternal life. And this is why we cannot worship both God and mammon. Oftentimes we have this idea in our society where, you know, wealth, the pursuit of happiness, you know, getting a perfect job that gets us lots of money is going to give us great happiness. But we know that that's superficial. That's only, that's, that lasts a moment. You know, I mean, several studies have been done, and I think once you make over a certain threshold of money, you're not any happier. And that only provides a temporary moment of happiness. You know, it is interesting when we think about it, because we see some of the happiest people are people who don't have a lot of money, who don't have a lot of material goods. Um, we have some religious sisters with us here today who have taken a vow of poverty, and yet we see their happiness. Even though they don't have all these goods of the world, they have something else. And this is what Shia LaBeouf found. It was that something else. It's that presence of Jesus Christ. It's that gift of eternal life. So what we need to do is we need to strive to do everything to try to attain eternal life. You know, and it may sound, you know, it may sound like a t tall order. It may sound like a lot to ask. But when you think about it, what's more important? You know, as, as those of us who are at the conference today, we heard, you know, Scott Hahn say about how this life is, only, is a high, we have a 100% mortality rate, but we also have 100% immortality rate. We don't need to worry about things of this life, things that bring us happiness now, but what brings us happiness in the life to come? And this is where we need to weed out those things that drive us away from Christ, those sinful behaviors, those focusing on money and things that lead us away from the church. And we need to make sure that we're following the Ten Commandments. You know, are we coming to church on Sunday? Are we keeping holy the Sabbath? Are we honoring our mother and father? Are we doing all of those things that God has asked us to? Or do we brush them away and say, well, it doesn't really matter. But it does matter. And when we do sin, when we do slip up, are we asking for forgiveness? You know, it's not enough to just say, oh, well, God will take care of that. It's fine. Because we have to have that conversion of heart. We have to put in the effort. We have to say, no, I don't need this. I don't need this thing that I think is going to give me happiness. Instead, I need, those, I need to cultivate those things that bring me to eternal life. And this is where it's a good practice for us to focus on, am I accumulating wealth for myself or am I giving to others? Am I sharing the blessings that God has given to me, both by being here in church, you know, coming to the worshiping community, worshiping with, with my community? As we heard in today's second passage, we're supposed to pray for one another and pray for those in authority. Because it's very easy to get stymied by the ways of the world and to now focus on the ways of life, the way that bring us to that eternal life. So today, Jesus gives us this challenge. Uh, we need to ask ourselves the hard question. Are we following the ways of the world? Are we following the ways of eternal life? Are we taking the gifts that God has given to us and are we using them to, to, to promote the gospel message, to evangelize? Are we using them for God's greater glory? Are we using them for our own self-interest? And are there areas of our lives where we're just kind of like towing the path and you know maybe just ignoring it, not saying, I know the church doesn't agree with this, but you know, that's okay. Or are we trying to have that authentic conversion of heart? so that we can enjoy eternal life and life to come and to bring those people around us with us by the example of our lives. And may all of us, like Shia LaBeouf, who had that experience, that conversion to want to grow closer to Christ, may we see the importance and dignity of what eternal life means. And may we spend each and every moment of our day using our gifts prudently so that we can enjoy eternal life and the life to come and bring those around us with us. Let us together profess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trust in the God hears our prayers. We bring our needs and petitions before him. For the church, may she be an effective witness for honesty and justice, speaking out with courage against systems that take advantage of the weak. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all world leaders, May they see the power of prayer and the wisdom of respectful dialogue so the dignity of all people may be promoted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this catechetical Sunday, we pray for all catechists and parents who teach the Catholic faith. May they be filled with abundant graces and wisdom as they pass along love of God and church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to war and violence, may all countries cultivate the gift of God's peace and compassion in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have an abundance of possessions, May they be aware of the needs of those less fortunate and share their gifts with the needy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Dr. Scott Hahn and Dr. John Bergsma, may God bless them for their enlightening presentation on on the Eucharist today that touched so many hearts. And may they be continually blessed as they preach the beauty of the Eucharist to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In today's Gospel, Jesus calls us to be trustworthy in all matters. May we continue with the renewal of our diocese, affirm the good that is being done, and work towards making this renewal a positive reality in our family of parishes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in the faith, may they be granted the rewards and blessings of the kingdom, especially those who have passed on this week from our parish. Richard Maynard, Cheryl Kubiak, Frederick Laval, Elaine Roberts, Helen Urbansik, and especially for John Kenzie and Joan Hector, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own prayers and concerns, which we offer now in prayer for silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you to hear these prayers, those we voice out loud and those we voice in the silence of our hearts. 
Hear and answer them in accordance with your most holy will. We ask this as we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The ushers will now take up the collection. We will have a combined collection for Catholic education. Today's gifts will be presented by Jeff and Mary Cryden. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And I will accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity. It even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. <laughs>
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from, from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holding of venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, as Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, able to just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. 
In humble prayer, we ask, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, and the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants of those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. 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 At this as the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those who are called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with the sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd ask you all to please be seated for a moment. This, uh, this weekend we're celebrating uh, Catechetical Sunday, so we'd like to take a moment to bless all of our catechists. So I'd ask anybody who is a catechist in our uh, Family Faith Formation Program or teaches religion in our school or is involved in our youth ministry on a core team to please stand for a blessing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the source of life and love. Send down your spirit upon these catechists. Inspire them to be not only teachers of your truth, but witnesses of your love. Give them the joy to proclaim the good news of salvation. Help them to see your will at work in their lives so that they may share it with others. May they, in their words and deeds, offer continual praise to the one who saves us. Give them the wisdom to teach. Help them discover the mysteries of our faith in new and exciting ways. May their curiosity inspire those they instruct to become your loyal disciples. We pray to you, Almighty Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the Master Teacher, the Healer, and the Savior, and in unity with the Holy Spirit, who inspires us with knowledge, courage, and understanding. Amen. Amen. And from all of us, thank you for your hard work and for all that you do to pass on the faith. We also have a few announcements. The annual Family Faith Formation Bill's Barbecue Tailgate is back on September 25th. Check out the inside of the bulletin for more information. Our youth ministry programs have restarted for the season. Life Teen um, is, on, is at 5.30 p.m. on Sunday nights, and Amped returns on Tuesday for um, young adults, and then on Thursdays we have Edge for middle, our middle school students. 40 Days for Life is beginning soon. For more information, we'll be having a kickoff meeting here in our gathering rooms on this Thursday, September 22nd. Registration starts at 5 p.m. and the um, speakers start at 6 p.m. Sunday, October 2nd, we'll, we will host the annual Light Chain at St. Greg's and we will have a peaceful demonstration about the dignity of all human life right here on Maple Avenue, Maple Road. And many of our ministries are resuming during the next few weeks, so please take a bulletin home to learn about our upcoming events and meetings. And we hope that all of you have a wonderful and blessed week. You too, Father. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Prayer for renewal. In, In every, every age, O oh God, God, you have, you have called, called us to be your people, to be your church. church. In this, this time, we begin anew to, to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, your people closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news. Celebrate your saving presence among us. Serve others with charity and justice and steward the world you have entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and guide our Emmaus journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Save Michael the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.